everyone it's sam here thank you for watching so today i'm going to show you how i've made this impossible box i've got a few different impossible boxes on the channel and i'll share the playlist up there but i've made this one just to hold some of these little foiled chocolate easter eggs and you just lift the top up and you can see it opens and then when you close it you can see how that works it's a really fun little style like i said i've got some other sizes on the channel in case you don't want this kind of size but these are great for all occasions. They're great little stocking stuffers, table favours, things like that. These are going into Easter hampers. And you can see there's tons. This actually holds two of these. Let me just um, show you. These are different. These are chocolate coins. But two of these bags of these chocolate eggs are in there. So the box that I'm making next, I thought one would have been enough. But I need to go and buy another two more <laughs> to fill it up. But um, yeah, so you can get quite a lot in there. It's a nice, you know, nice little gift. So let me show you how to make it. So I've used for the aperture, that's completely optional, but I've used the DL nesting dies and I'll give you the sizes to that in a moment. And then for the papers, I've used the pastel gingham and tiny polka dots. I've used the gingham on this one. I think I'm doing the same, yeah, because I think I had scraps. So rather than cutting into a fresh piece, I've just used the same again. The decoration's all from the Easter little kit that was in Papercraft Essentials. I think I've used it on most of my Easter projects, so it will be linked below the videos. Um, check it out. There should still be stock. If it's not available on Craft Stash, then you'll have to just check your local stockist, like news agents, things like that. So this is a piece of six and a half by ten and a quarter. Along the six and a half side, you're going to score at one and a half, three, four and a half, and six, and then rotate so the half inch tabs at the bottom, and you're going to score at one and a half eight eight and three quarters okay fold and burnish all of those score lines so then with your half inch tab on the right hand side you want to cut your aperture on the second panel okay so there's my first panel second panel third and fourth the second panel will be the front and i use the second smallest size the actual size of this is three quarters by five. You could go a little bit. You could do one and still, you know, it'd be strong because you reinforce that piece again when you add your acetate. Although saying that, you don't have to. I mean, if you're adding more of a solid gift or maybe it might be like a some body spray or something like that, then it wouldn't fall through the gaps. But obviously, if I didn't have the acetate on this, then they would possibly fall out. So on the reverse here, I'm just going to run some double-sided tape around the four sides okay now you'll also notice that I've brought mine more towards the bottom you see there's a bigger gap there because this folds down into the space here so you don't really want your closure going over your frame although I have covered it with the decoration anyway but that's why I brought mine down but you know you can pop it wherever you want really so I'm just going to take the backing off and stick the acetate down. Give it a little wipe with some rubbing alcohol. Surgical spirit will just take off any sticky marks you might have on your acetate. Then you want to do some cutting. Again, you could do the cutting before and then cut your aperture and stuff. It's up to you. So you're going to cut up all of these four score lines. So I've got the half inch tab on my right hand side there. And then when you get to this one, you've got that rectangle. Just remove that completely. Cut a little wedge off of that one. And then the one below the aperture or the second panel in, you want to fold that square up. You want to keep that square. All the others, you can take a wedge off and they're all going to fold in to form the base of the box. Next, we need to do some cutting along this other end. OK, so fold over two of the panels like so. Pop it in your scoreboard and I'm just going to use my little metal stylus here. And you just want to put a little marker at three quarters of an inch, two and a quarter, three and three quarters and five and a quarter. So that is halfway between each of these rectangles that you'll have. OK, or halfway between each of the panels. You then want this facing you so you can see all my little markers. One there, there, there and there. Starting on the end here, I'm going to cut from that notch across to that score line there. The next one, you're going to cut across and you're working within this rectangle and then you're just going to cut down. I'm going to remove all of the score lines when I'm doing this. Make sure you pinch them together. You don't really want these pieces shifting. Like so. OK, 
Okay, so then go to the next one, remove the score line there, and then again from that marker, cut down and across. Again, cut down and then across. And then the very end here, you're going to remove that whole rectangle. Okay. Now, when you open it up, you'll have four arrows and then this rectangle piece here you should have a tab here and then your tab all down the side here. In fact, you can just take a little wedge off of the ends there and also off of this one. Like so. I'll just bring it around this way. You can see the shape that you should have. You then want to fold this one down and that's how it's going to stay when we go to close it. Okay, that piece there is this one here. So before I stick it together, I'm going to cover my side. Again, you can do this once you put it together, but I tend to be sticking these pieces down a lot when it's flat. But you've got one, two. In my case, I've got three, but you might have four because you might not have cut that one out. These are one and a quarter by six and a quarter. So I'm going to stick all those down. Okay, next we want to start putting it together. So you're going to add your glue all down this side here. But don't add it to this one just yet, but make sure it stays folded over. So flip this over and just fold one side like so. And then fold over the other side. And it should all line up nicely with each other. Okay, so once that's dry, you should be able to push this down. But we'll stick that together in a minute. So now with the bottom, you've got that solid square one, which will be in line with this panel. So you want to stick the back one down first. And then I'm using the construction glue so it'll become nice and strong. Stick one of the sides down, another side, and then lastly that square. And that one will just cover all of it and just look much neater. And then you can just go inside and just push that all down with a ruler. And then to fill it with your treats, you just pull it up and you can see it expands the opening there. But when you go to close it, it's very clever. It will all lock in. So with this tab here, just add some of your quick grab glue and you want to pop that around. You'll have a little gap because we're wrapping it around the box but if you pinch it together there you should be able to get a pretty good join like so and then just give it a test and you can just add a little bit more pressure in there like so and then to just tidy that up a little bit more I've got this one here which I've cut a little bit too wide cut it to the same three quarters I think but I'm actually going to bring it in just a little bit so there's a slight border mind you though that one I haven't I'm just going to take a little bit off and that's just the same eight inches that you know it comes in the paper pad but I just wrapped it around you could cut individual pieces if you want but I thought it looked quite nice as like a full wrapped piece so I'm going to cut about an inch off the end and then again, I'm going to use the quick grab glue. Run that all the way along. And then start from the back. Like so it will cover the join. And just pinch it really nicely, nice and tightly around each corner there. And then it'll just overlap over the back. Like so. And then again, if you open it up, You'll be able to just go in there and add a bit more pressure. Make sure you've got some nice corners there. Just kind of pinch it like so. And then I've got my sentiment here and a little bow, which is from that kit that I've been using. So I'm just going to attach this one just on the corner there so you can still see the sentiment and then I'm just going to attach 
this piece to to the actual kind of lid there because I want it to move when I open it like so so just check that there's no glue I don't want it catching on that but check there's no glue when you lift it up I might just have to stick that down oh no it's okay there we go so it just turns a simple looking gift box into something a little bit special with that fun closure on the top. Like I said, check out the Impossible Box playlist where I've got some other sizes there that you might want to make instead. And I'll have them popping up here actually as well. So you might just want to click on them and watch those ones next. I'll link the papers if I can and the little kit that comes with the magazine below and some acetate if people are interested. Oh, and the, um, the dies there that I use because I love these ones with the inverted scallop. I think they look really sweet. Thank you as always for watching. Give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed today. It really does help the channel and I'll be back again very soon. Take care. Bye.